Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and on the desk today we have a Hammond International Concord 2 it's a customer's radio that's been sent to me with some issues but before we start don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment join the Facebook group, join Patreon, buy me a coffee have a look at my website and let's get started so here we have a Hammond International Concord 2 in its box it's also sent me a frequency counter unit just to be um, calibrated against my GPS so we can do that and here we have the Concorde 2 so on the front it looks okay the case looks like it's had a bit of a hard time but and we've got these switch that's kind of flapping about in the breeze on the side so not sure what that's all about and we have another switch on the side somebody likes to put switches on the side on this thing and we have a switch on the back as well very nice oh well let's see what they do so taking the lid off everything kind of looks okay until I see one of the switches and I take a, a large sigh and think oh my lord what is this let's have a closer look so basically we've got crystals across the switch very nice okay well I suppose it kind of worked we've got a switch on the back I presume that's for the Roger beep but yeah nice date code of 1983 on the side there from somebody who's looked at it And now we see what the other switch does. So this must be a 10kc jump. A very crude one because it probably won't have worked properly due to some channels needing a 1 and some channels needing a 0. So yeah. Well, we can do better than that. Well, the customer wants me to get this working so we'll get it working and we'll get it back to its former glory for all you playing along at home 12th week of 81 on the PLL and yep yeah, I'll switch at the back it's doing the beep there's no RF bias mods doesn't look like the ALC has been done either so we can do that so let's take out this poorly switch and put this back to some form of normality so turning it over it's just literally a switch with two crystals on it How it ever was on frequency, I do not know. So we fitted the correct crystal back into it, so it's now mid-high super high, which it should be. And we'll take this very broken switch out as well, which was the crude 10kc. So we'll get rid of that and put it back to normal. And we'll attend to the bleep, which is only cutting the tone off. So we've still got a gap at the end of the transmission. It just removes the tone. So we'll fish out these wires. 
and we'll make this a little bit better for him. So we've reconnected up the audio to the correct point. Let's have a look at the RF bias whilst we're here. So I've changed the resistor. 0.7 of a volt. Very nice. And we've done the R150. We've done R44. And we've done R40. Three essential parts to change in these. To make them a bit better. So I'll put a voltage feed VCO in. We'll put one of my modification boards in. We'll just have a quick alignment and see what it's all about. So we're on the 10 to 40 test point there. And it's not too far away, but we can bring it down and put it as close to 10 to 40 as we can. I don't overshoot in it because these are a bit twitchy sometimes, but that'll do. That's close enough, a couple of hertz. Have a look at the crystals. 2330, yep, yeah, no problem. 2105 and 19880. Fantastic. That one's just moved just a tiny bit. They all seem to just move around a bit until they settle down so there's the transmitted frequency 2415 2965 2515 okay that's pretty good and there's our uk40 and we can pull the kc shift to bring us down for that down onto 60125 So we're just having a look at the 10692 and the 10695. So 10695 is a, a whole fortnight out. So we'll put that up correctly. Because this one's pulling the crystal. This one's very, very twitchy. But we'll get it close enough and that should be good enough. And I'm going to have a look at 10692, which is the crystal's resonant frequency. This control's a little bit more forgiving. So 10692, yep, yeah, excellent. And there's the correct wiring for the bleep. So that will now eliminate the delay. So when the bleep is off, there'll be no delay which is how it should be. Now the customer wanted me to fit another bleep in this as well. So as you can hear, no delay. So we're gonna have top, how international bleep. And we're gonna have the bottom, one of my adjustable K-tone beeps. So on these adjustable beeps we can speed it up and slow it down and adjust the pitch. Just get it sounding nice for him. Yep, sounds good. So in the top position we have Ham International beep, bottom position we have the K-Tone beep. Fantastic. And in the middle position, nothing. So we've tidied it up inside. And everything's good. Put the beep inside some heat shrink tubing so it's nicely protected. So the customer can adjust it if he wants to. And then we have this quick repair on this Ham International Concorde 2. It's sounding well now, so... We'll give it a test and we'll send it back to the customer. So yeah, another Ham International Concorde 2. We do like these radios, one of my favourites. Anyway, if 
you like the video don't forget to like share subscribe comment join the facebook group join patreon buy me a coffee have a look at my website microchips.net where all my boards are and thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode